G'day YouTube and welcome back to Perfecting Pete. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last upload. I'm really sorry I missed last week. To be honest, with the amount of, of uh, struggling I'm doing, trying to find time to get uh, videos recorded, find time to come up with interesting content that you might actually want to watch um, and still do, I would call it my day job, but lately it's been my 24 hour job. Um, I'm actually thinking about knocking back my regular releases to fortnightly instead of weekly. Uh, I'm just kind of sick of apologizing for never making it. I prefer to set your expectations up front and, um, and then stick to them. So, um, yeah, so today anyway, so, so today we're going to be talking about a couple more myths, this time specifically around intermittent fasting. And they're the questions that I've been asked personally quite a few times talking to people uh, about how I lost my weight, how it's, I mean, it's obviously, it's still in progress, but... Uh, it's enough that people have noticed and, and asked me a bunch of questions about intermittent fasting. So I thought I'd just dispel all of the common myths that I hear and that I've seen uh, in one video. I'm um, just continuing the, the, the new Mythbusters um, series. I won't be doing these videos exclusively. So uh, next week, I'll probably just do a general update or next fortnight, I'll do a general update. Um, but before we jump into my intermittent fasting myths, uh, if this is your first time joining us, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the channel. I release videos on a fortnightly basis, <laughs> new words, um, uh, basically recording my uh, weight loss journey. Um, I talk through all the tips and tricks I learn along the way in terms of losing weight, in terms of fitness, um, the BS in the industry, and there is lots. Uh, obviously also now the myths that we kind of grow up with taking for granted that we were told by our parents and advertising and just general common knowledge uh, that turn out to be utter BS. Um, so I share those, those, that information with you in the hopes that hopefully it'll motivate you to, to get up there if you've been procrastinating, uh, been talking about weight loss for a long time, uh, but never seem to get up and, and get started. Uh, that's kind of where I was stuck for 20 years. So this channel is dedicated to hope, hoping and helping you uh, to kick off your journey the same as I have. Um, so, uh, if you're uh, if you get some use out of this video, please hit the like button subscribe as I said I release videos on a regular basis uh, leave me a comment I reply to everything that comes up and let's get on with it. So uh, in a minute fasting obviously I've talked about that on this channel um, That's how that's the primary way that I lost most of the weight that I've lost um, To be honest the scales have now stabilized, but my waist continues to shrink according to suits that uh, fit like six weeks ago and now don't. I don't really know what's going on there, but we'll talk about that some other time. Um, but intermittent fasting, you know, the concept of not eating for 16 hours a day and then getting all of your calories uh, in an eight hour eating window, uh, or in my case, a 20 hour fasting window and a four hour eating window, uh, I get some common questions. So I'm just gonna run through them in no particular order and keep it uh, another short video. So. Obviously, you know, there's some, some logical ones that I get asked pretty regularly. If you don't eat during the day, won't you feel hungry? Now, if you watch any of my videos about intermittent fasting, uh, or even my review of the, um, the program I was on, um, I, uh, I can't even remember the name of the program anymore, um, Science Based Six Pack, um, you'll see that I'm not actually talking about completely just nothing goes into your mouth for that 16 or 20 hour window. The reality is I think if I just stopped eating for a day, I'd probably feel hungry at some point, certainly at the start of kicking off intermittent fasting. And that's because your body um, is releasing um, hormones in preparation for you to eat. Your body adjusts to your eating cycle so that it can efficiently digest food. So when you first start fasting, your body's going to continue to release those hormones. Your body's going to continue to expect to be receiving food during your breakfast and lunch windows. And you know, it'll remind you an hour or two after it expected to receive food that, hey, you still haven't eaten anything, hurry up and eat something. It takes your body a little while to adjust. But what I found when I started fasting is I really never felt hungry. The other thing I was going to say is when I'm fasting, I'm not eating or drinking nothing. I am eating nothing, but I'm, I'm, you know, I am filling my stomach. I don't feel hungry because I'm drinking at least two liters of water today, a, a day, which fills your stomach. You don't have that void in the pit of your stomach. I'm also drinking plenty of coffee. Now, caffeine is a hunger suppressant. It will help you to feel full uh, and it has a lot of other positive effects in, in terms of weight loss while you're fasting as well. Uh, but that's one of the reasons the, you know, if you're, if you're drinking a couple of black coffees a day, it's not going to break your fast as long as you're not adding sugar or milk. 
um, and it will help you feel fuller longer. Um, same goes for the water. I'm also not just drinking water. Um, you know, I'm drinking lime juice. If you have a look at some of my previous videos, I've talked about my magic water. So it's got lime uh, juice in it. It's got apple cider vinegar and it's got electrolytes in it. All things that help, um, you know, collectively in terms of your fast, but also to help suppress hunger. So no, you, I, I don't feel hungry when I'm fasting. Uh, what I do notice is I don't have the things, I don't have all the issues associated with eating during the day, which I actually find gives me more energy, which kind of leads me to the second myth that if you don't eat, you're going to feel lethargic throughout the day. You're not going to be able to think straight. Um, you're not going to be able to perform at work. I actually found the opposite. So beyond, you know, needing to take that, that at lunch hour or some time off to eat from your day, um, you know, if you eat a big meal for lunch, you will... Well, I notice that I feel, I get the afternoonsies. I want a nana nap after a big meal. I think that's pretty common. You know, um, you get that kind of slump after eating. And that's, that's um, you know, that's your body processing food. That's the energy it's consuming to, to, um, to deal with all of the food that you just ate. Um, I actually find that I don't get the afternoonsies when I'm fasting. So if anything, I have more energy throughout the day. Again, after your body adjusts, it kind of levels out. You become more sensitive to insulin, um, but your body also adjusts to not expecting to be fed. And you'll actually find that you can think clearer longer. And a lot of people have, have said that during fasting, certainly I'm one of them, um, I get mental clarity increased, not decreased as a result of fasting. So that's kind of the second myth. Third myth, this one's common knowledge. Everybody knows breakfast is the most important meal of the day. There's no actual science supporting that concept that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Sure, if you're if you're overweight and you go to a doctor and you say that you're skipping breakfast every day, it's a nice easy thing for the doctor to kind of latch onto and say, right, well then you need to start eating breakfast every morning. Why? Because if you've filled your stomach, um, you know, first thing in the morning, then you're less likely to graze on junk, uh, you know, leading up to lunchtime. But the reality is there is no science supporting the concept that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's likely, I'm just gonna put this out there as my opinion, I know it's not It's not exclusively mine, it's likely that whole concept was invented by people trying to sell you cereal, bacon and eggs. Anyway, it's not the most important meal of the day. You can safely skip your breakfast when you're intermittent fasting, it's not gonna have any detrimental health effect, and then you're gonna get all the positive effects of intermittent fasting generally. Uh, next myth. Won't I gain weight if I eat a big meal just before bed? Now that's one I've heard a million times before, you know, don't eat your heaviest meal just before bed because then your body, you know, you're not burning energy, um, you're, you're, you're lying in bed, um, you know, won't it turn all of that food energy into fat because you're not burning it? Again, there's actually no science supporting that concept. In fact, the science says that your metabolism doesn't have, sorry, your overall weight gain or loss doesn't have any uh, there is no impact on your overall weight gain or loss based on when you eat your calories. It's actually more important, um, you know, to in terms of weight gain or loss, it's more important about what your overall calories are for the day. Now, intermittent fasting accelerates weight loss by encouraging your body to burn fat while you're not eating. So when you're eating on a regular basis, you know, every two or three hours, your body is burning carbohydrates to provide you with energy for the day. The minute you start fasting, and science says 16 hours minimum uh, to get all of the benefits from fasting, your body will switch to burning fat for energy. So there's no science supporting the idea that if you eat your heaviest meal of the day just before going to bed that it's gonna have any negative effects, but there certainly are positive effects to fasting. Next one, won't my body go into starvation mode? Now this is kind of a silly one. I, I, ha I have heard it once or twice. It's not a common question I get asked. Um, but if you are fasting for 16 hours, the, the idea that your body will go into starvation mode and turn everything you do eat outside of that, that fasting window into fat restores, uh, stores because your body thinks it's starving. Yeah, the, again, the science doesn't support that myth. It is purely a myth. In fact, the science says, and, and I found a study as early as 1987. Um, there are heaps more on the internet. Um, I'm not gonna link to the study because I want you to do your own research and develop your own relationship with, with health and fitness. But the study clearly said that it found that the earliest, the minimum fasting window before it had an appreciable effect on lowering your metabolism was 60 hours. So when you're, when you're fasting for 16 to 20 hours a day, it's not gonna slow your metabolism down. It's not gonna throw your body into starvation mode. Unless you're fasting for three or four days, it's really not gonna have an appreciable effect. 
But again, you do get all the positive benef benefits from intermittent fasting. Last one, won't I struggle? Um, if I go weight training, if I go to the gym, if I go, uh, you know, if I do any kind of cardio exercise, if I'm fasting, won't I struggle for energy? That is one that I got asked a lot. I still get asked today. Uh, the answer is no. You may feel lethargic the first couple of times if you go and do a massive weight training session, if you're at the gym pumping iron for a couple of hours, you know, a week into fasting, um, then you probably will struggle a little bit for energy. And I think anyone who goes to the gym in the afternoon and, you know, on some days after work and in the morning, as soon as they wake up, they'll notice an energy difference there too. I'm um, certainly in their performance in terms of how much weight they can lift. But um, the science says that your body will or can and will adjust. So if you are regularly training in a gym or you're doing cardio while in a fasted state, your muscles will adapt to operating without carbohydrates, you know, fueling your body on a regular basis. So you may feel lethargic at the start, but as a general idea, no, you will not suffer at the gym as a result of taking up an a intermittent fasting program. It just might take your body a while to adjust. Um, so just keep pushing through that. That's it. They're the common myths. They're the common questions I get asked that are you know, founded on a myth, the, the general knowledge people have that isn't actually based in science. Um, so that's it. It's a pretty short video. Hopefully you got some use out of it. If you did, please hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to see regular videos from me on my weight loss journey and all the stuff that I've learned along the way in terms of fitness and health and weight loss. Um, drop me a comment. I do reply to everything on YouTube and I will see you in a couple of weeks time. Thanks for watching.